to them. From the 31 yard line. Martin, both speedy receivers, all worth the A's to the right. He's out of the backfield. He comes with the screen to Dwayne Thomas. Thomas fumbles the football. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. And welcome to the gridiron. And before I get started, I just want to say thank you so much, everyone out there who's been watching my videos. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate it. If you can give this video a thumbs up or maybe leave a comment below or share the video. It would mean so much to me. But just, anyway, just thank you so much for just taking time out of your day to check out this video. Thank you. Um... Well, uh, let's see, Nick Gates, and I got some, uh, we got some, I got the, some grades here from BFF, okay, just a little disclaimer here, I, uh, grades from the, the Giants from, uh, <laughs> their Thursday night debacle against the Washington football team, so, uh, Nick Gates, he, uh, got operated on, um, Friday morning, and, uh, to, to repair his, uh, you know, his tibia and his fibula, snapped. So he got repaid, uh, you know, got operated on, um, or worded, you know, he, he'll, he's going to, he missed the season, but I was reading online and all and everything, you know, that, you know, he said, uh, this, uh, it's going to take more than this to, to, to prevent me from coming back. So he, so he's, he'll, we'll see him next year and I'm sure he's going to do everything in his power to, uh, to come back, you know, 100%. So here's hoping, Nick, <laughs> we certainly could use you. Um, I mean, isn't it just like sometimes a little mind boggling how we got Nick Gates is like, you know, pretty much our most consistent. And I, I'm not saying the sky can't be, uh, you know, uh, better for like maybe Andrew Thomas, maybe he has a higher ceiling or somebody else like that and all, but our most consistent, you know, lineman over the past couple of years, Nick Gates, undrafted free agent. I mean, last night, if you look at, uh, after he came out, uh, Nick Gates got injured early, in, you know, half, about, it was like five, six minutes to go in the first quarter. Um, let's see, we had uh, left tackle with Andrew Thomas, first rounder, right? Then we had Ben Bredesen came in, he's a fourth rounder, okay? But then uh, we had Billy Price in there at center, okay? First rounder. He was a uh, Pick number 21 overall in that draft, right? And next to him, we had Will Hernandez, okay? He was uh, second rounder, pick number 34. Almost a first rounder, right? Then you had uh, Nate Solder at the right tackle, right? First rounder. He was pick number 17 in his draft, all right? So on, on the offensive line there, and I mean, then we got, you know, also got Matt Parrott. Didn't play, but, you know, we you know, have him backing up. You know, Solder, he's, he's a third rounder. You know, but I mean, like, who, who was in there last night, okay, who, you know, for the most part, you know, the three and a half quarters, right, after uh, Nick Gates got hurt, we had uh, one, two, we had three first rounders, a second rounder, who was darn near close to a first rounder, and we had a fourth rounder in there, right, and our best offensive lineman is an undrafted free agent. I mean, just simply unbelievable how you can't get, uh, uh, <sighs> unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Um, now, I'll just go over some of the grades here from last night. I mean, this is PFF, so some of them I, I, don't, I don't quite get. Um, I thought the offensive line did decently. Obviously, PFF thought otherwise. A uh, couple of them here. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I'm like I, don't, I, don't even, I don't even know where to get this stuff from. But on the offense, the number one star, of course, Daniel Jones, he got a 91.3 overall grade. But his, his running grade, he gave him a 69.1. He had nine carries for 95 yards, should have been a touchdown, should have been more, should have been over 100 yards, should have had what, 12 extra, should, should, should have had 107, nine carries, 107 yards, and a, and a touchdown, okay, or an, or an additional touchdown. He should have had two, two touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns, right? But it gave him a 69.1. But anyway, and Caden Smith, he was the second. He, he had 32 snaps, 
Okay, so he was in about almost about half the snaps, not quite, but he graded out an 87.9. He did he had good, he had good, a few good catches in there. Um there we had Elijah Penny. He was only in there for three snaps, okay. But he ran but the thing is he ran the ball twice, both times he got first downs when he ran the ball. Okay, so he graded out at a 70.9. Then Sterling Shepard, I'm not quite I mean, he had he had a great game. He, but he graded out at a 68.6. So I'm not quite sure. I, I'll, apparently, a lot of it is, well, he had one bad run, which really wasn't his fault. But when he got the ball, the, the defense was like 35 yards in the backfield, so he had no chance on that one. So I think that's why his grade got lowered down as bad as it was. Saquon Barkley, so he, he was a 63.3. I mean, he had that one nice run. Um, he had 57 yards rushing, 41 of it came on one carry. So he had like 12 other carries, I believe it was, for like 16 yards. I mean, Devontae Booker was it was a 63. Kyle Rudolph was 62.6. Okay. Um, let's see. Chris Myrak, all right. Uh, he was the other tight end. He was a 62.4. Okay, they called him up, I guess, because of Evan Ingram. You know, he was still hurt. Uh, Kenny Galladay was a 62.3. Uh, C.J. Board he was 62.2. Ben Bredesen was a 61.8. I mean, he, he was the top dog as far as uh, offensive linemen. Then it starts plummeting from there. Darius Slayton was a 61. Um, his passing grade was a 60.5, and he drops a touchdown in the end zone, so I'm not quite sure how that worked out. Will Hernandez was a 59.9. So our two guards did decently. You know, decently. Nothing exceptional, okay? But then... Uh, uh, Kadarius Tony, he was in there for 19 plays. Yeah, it was 54.5. Nate Solder was a 49.7. Uh, the last four guys, the bottom four, the four worst grades were all offensive linemen. All right. you know, it goes both ways. I mean, yeah, they did a poor job, but also look who they were going against, though. But, I mean, Nate Solder was a 49.7. Nick Gates, you know, he was having a hard time. He was a 44.4. His pass blocking grade was a 10.8. I mean, I didn't know. He, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, he was he was he was having a hard time. I mean, he was just getting bull rushed, totally bull rushed. If they had him in there at center, he he'd still be playing. He wouldn't have been hurt. I mean, if they had him in there and they put Bredesen in the guard and Hernandez and then Solder and Thomas, Nick Gates would still be on the team right now. Because I mean, you could just see it's like almost every time there was a he, he was just. You know, one guy was getting lined up over him. As soon as they snapped the ball, he was just getting bull rushed. And that's what that's what did him in. That's what got him the injury. Uh, Andrew Thomas was a 43.6, so he, he he got quite a bit. Chase Young was just running right by him quite often. And then the last one was the, the center, Billy Price. It was a 28.1. His pass blocking grade, 8.7. Holy crap. 8.7. So we had two guys there. Nick Gates was a 10.8 and Billy Price was an 8.7. I mean, Ben Bredesen, his pass blocking grade was a 25. Kyle Rudolph's pass blocking grade was a 31.8. So it's amazing. Daniel Jones only got sacked four times. Amazing he didn't throw any interceptions. Amazing he did as well as he did. It's absolutely, simply amazing that he didn't get sacked and fumble the ball or anything like that compared to somebody's pass blocking grades. I mean, whew. wow. Oh, my goodness. It's amazing we were even in the game at all. Um, now, we got the defensive grades here, okay? Uh, let's see. A Dory Jackson. All right? It's, it, it just, ah. He was an 84.3. He got burned in the end zone for that one touchdown. It was the one drive. Um, Giants were up 26 to 20, and, and, and the Washington football team went two, in two plays. All right, they went, uh, I believe it was like 70, they went 75 yards in two plays. And he got burned in the end zone for a touchdown reception. And he graded out an 84.3, so go figure. Uh, and his coverage grade was an 84.9. I don't know. Xavier McKinney had a good game, 75.5. James Bradbury, I'm not quite sure, where, you know, he was getting burned left and right. He had the interception. But he was getting burned left and right. His grade was a 
to Brill Peppers, who got in there is a 69.8. All right, his pass rushing grade was a 90.4. Okay, very, very good. And, you know, he can't complain too much because he was in there. Uh, looks like there was 71 plays that they played on defense, and he was in for 57 of them. So he, and he returned, he was on the punt return team too. So he got in there for over 60 plays. So he can't, he can't be complaining like he did last, last time. All right. Uh, but it just goes to show you, I mean, like, you know, Kenny Galladay blowing up on the sideline. I'm not sure if he was yelling at Daniel Jones or Jason Garrett or both of them, whatever it was, you know. And then you got, uh, you know, so, uh, the, you know, he's a little, a little upset. Then you got um, Kadarius Tony was tweeting out something. Wasn't very happy with the amount of time he's, he's playing. You know, um, you know. They got, uh, you know, their own two, uh, you know, nothing really heals a lot of wounds quite like winning. So, I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're, you know if, if they're going to win a game this year, if they're going to go 1-16 and win a game, it would be the next game coming up, home against the Falcons. If they're going to win a game, if they're going to win any games at all this year, one game, it would be game week number three coming up, so... They can win, you know. They'll start healing. Hopefully, hopefully healing some wounds here. But uh, Kadarius Tony, I mean, he he was only in there for five plays, I think, the first week. So he got in a lot more. But he's just not being, you know, the ball's not getting thrown to him, or he's not getting, you know, handed the ball, or you know. So they got to start finding some stuff for him. Hopefully, Evan Ingram can come back. And, you know, give us another weapon, you know. But, um, let's see, Blake Martinez had a lot of tackles. He graded out at 66. Leonard Williams, you know, he was a 64.8. I mean, uh, you know, he didn't, you know, no pass rush. And, I mean, nothing. I mean, the pass rush was horrible, absolutely horrible. Julian Love had a good game, 63.4. Or Darius Williams was a 61.1. Okay. Dornay Holmes was a 60.7. Reggie Raglan, the tackling machine, um, he was only in there for 12 plays. But uh, he graded out at a 60. The uh, X-Man, all right, that, our, our, our edge rushers, I mean, Hoshane Zimenez, 58.9. So uh, And Lorenzo Carter, our other edge rusher, was a 58.2. Carter Coughlin was only in there for two plays. He graded out at a 57.2. And Aziz Ojolari, who had another sack, but he only graded out at a 51.6. So, Austin Johnson, all right, uh, he was 51.7. Logan Ryan, he, he graded out at a 51. Dexter Lawrence, made game, he had a, it was 45. He graded out at Ty, Ty Crowder, uh, he graded out at 32.1. Uh, let's see, Danny Shelton, he, he, was, he, he graded out at 30.6. Raymond Johnson the third, twenty nine point seven. So I mean, it's not that's a bad grades. That's a bad, you know, a lot of bad things going on there. Uh, you know, I, I was also I was watching too. Um, I, I there's on online is a, a thing about the Dexter Lawrence. It was like on a Twitter account. Somebody and it was showing. Like, um, Dexter, unless he lined up offsides on the last play or second to last play of the game, unless he lined up offside, he moved. If you, uh, there's a Twitter account, somebody was, the center picks the ball, picks the ball up to start snapping it back. As soon as he picks the, it's like synchronized. As soon as he moves the ball up, that's when Dexter Lawrence starts moving. Now, as I said, unless Dexter starts, he's, Offsides, unless he's lined up over the ball, or he's just lined up offside. That I could say, right? But the shot that I saw on this this Twitter, um, you know, video from his somebody's Twitter account, um, you know, as soon as the, the center picks picks the ball up a little bit to snap it backwards, okay, you, you know, as soon as he picks up, that's when Dexter Lawrence moves. Yeah, I mean, if you slow it down and you look at it. Uh, the ball got moved first. Okay, so he wasn't, you know, uh, what I'm looking at, uh, this Twitter video, he wasn't offside. I mean, I said, unless he lined up offside. If he lined up offside, he was offside. No question. But, I mean, if they're calling him offside 
based on, you know, jumping, you know, before the ball moved. Now, as soon as the guy picks the ball up a slightly, slight, to, to, to snap it backwards, as soon as the ball moves, that's when he moves. He did not move before the ball moved. He was, he was not offside. And then I said, you also, then you had, um, you know, C.J. Board. I mean, I mean, I mean, it wasn't like he had the guys, you know, the, the you know, the, the hump talking about the holding penalty and a call back Daniel Jones' touchdown run. I mean, it wasn't like he was blocking and he had the guy's shirt back, you know, around around the back or the, the name plate or something or whatever. He had he was holding him in here, in in here, you know, and and you know, he was holding him. Yeah, but you're allowed to hold him in here. I don't know. I, Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. I mean, that's just another horrible call. Two horrible calls. I mean, and then, you you know, it kind of felt like the way it was with, with Dallas last year, how we had a couple calls who went against us and took some points off the board and we wound up losing in Dallas. And then you got the uh, Darius Slayton one where the ball was, you know, you know, it was kind of like right here, should have caught the ball, bounced off his fingers, kind of reminds you of the Evan Ingram pass that he should have caught playing against the Eagles, which would have sealed the deal. I mean, just unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. I mean, the Giants, you know, just shooting themselves in the foot. And they got some bad luck, you know. Hopefully, hopefully the luck will turn around. I said, if anything's going to start turning around, it'll be week three. Thank goodness we're not waiting for the Falcons for like week 17 or 16 or something because whew, the season will be far over by then, but... If we're going to turn this around at all, if we're going to get win number one, if we're ever going to get a win this season, it'll be in week number three. And uh, if it don't, whew, boy, I'll tell you what, man. Things are going to, people are going to start talking. Things are going to start happening. It could start getting pretty ugly. I mean, but we'll have to wait and see. Week three, bring on the Falcons. That's all I got to say. Well, as always, people, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. You guys stay safe out there and go Giants! Woo!